live now. Oh, no. Hi, hi everybody. Uh, this is me from London in my kitchen. I'm Annabelle Carmel. Some of you may know me from my books, especially if you have a baby, because I specialize in writing books on weaning to make sure that your child has the best diet in their first formative years, which is so important. So I was going to be taking part in the Abu Dhabi Literary Festival, the book festival, but unfortunately it got cancelled or rather postponed. So instead, we thought it'd be a nice idea to do a live from my kitchen and make one of the recipes I was going to demo at the festival. And I know it's Ramadan coming up on Thursday, so I thought this would be a perfect recipe to make for Ramadan because it's like dipping your fingers into the chocolate box, but actually, it's not really chocolate, it just tastes like chocolate, but it's full of healthy ingredients. And it's a recipe the kids can make themselves because there's literally no cooking involved, so even young children can make it and they'll have a lot of fun. So I have three children of my own, a little bit about myself. Unfortunately, I lost my first child, Natasha, when she was a baby at three months, she got an infection right in her brain. And it was really tra tragic. Um, my second child was born a year later and he was the world's worst eater. And I felt so vulnerable with this child I wouldn't eat. And I wanted to have a legacy to Natasha. So I decided to write a book all about how to give your child a healthy diet. And the first book I wrote was published in 1991. It was called The Complete Baby and Toddler Meal Planner. It's very difficult to find a publisher, but eventually it got published and that book sold over 5 million copies. And that was the start of my career. And now I've written 46 books, all of them are children's food or family food. And the book I'm using today which has this recipe for no sugar, chocolate, orange energy balls, is this book. It's called Real Food Kids Will Love. It was um, a family cookbook. It's some of my favorite family recipes, they're quick and easy, and also some great recipes for kids to make themselves. So, I'm going to show you what you're going to be making, well, when you, if you want to use this recipe, because it's really simple ingredients, and not too many. So first of all, we have dates. I know they're really popular. So dates, some cocoa powder, some cashew nuts, nuts are really good for you, full of protein, some raisins, and I've got some orange extract. Now, if you can't find orange extract, don't worry, because you can use some grated orange zest from the skin of an orange, just grate it on a thin grater. And I've got some boiling water, and then I'm going to roll them into balls. They're going to look a bit like this. These are some I made earlier. So some of them I'm going to roll in desiccated coconut, some of them I roll in cocoa powder, and some of them sprinkles. So I'm making a lot of recipes where you put everything into a food processor, stick it here, and then you roll them into balls. I do this quite a lot for babies when they want finger food, so I make chicken balls, with chicken and vegetables and apple, or salmon and quinoa balls, and you put everything in the food processor, you roll it up into the balls and you pop them in the oven. And they're absolutely perfect for little fingers. So when they're, when they're getting quite independent, they want to feed themselves and eat perfect food. So, into my food process, processor, in case you just joined us, we have dates. I'm going to put those in. I chop them up. Okay. And then cashew nuts. These are unsalted cashew nuts. Probably use other nuts like pecans would be nice as well. Raisins, or we could use sultanas. And some cocoa powder. And then I'm going to use half a teaspoon of orange extract. But if you don't have orange extract, you could use really just an orange. And then I've got two tablespoons of boiling water. Sorry about that. Two tablespoons of boiling water. There we go. This one. I'm going to whiz it up together. Okay. 
I'll carry on this in a minute, but I just wanted to say like, all of these things could be done by a little one. And I think you can teach your children to cook from a very young age. So even a two-year-old can help you put the ingredients into the food processor, turn the button on, they love doing that, measure the ingredients, help you do that. They can mash, they can roll dough, they can cut out shapes. And I think kids can go in the kitchen at a very early age and they learn so much. And they all love it. And it's a great way to bond with your child. together takes a little bit longer. Matilda's asking, what sorts of dates do you recommend? You can use any dates, to be honest. So you can use the marshmallow dates or just, I got dates in the supermarket. Um, they were they're already fitted. Um, so it's easy to use, but any dates will work with this. It's going to taste delicious. And Isabel has just asked, what age child can I feed this to? This is fine from one year. So interestingly, unless your child has an allergy to nuts, it's really important to introduce nuts from six months, including peanut butter. And the research now has shown that introducing peanut butter early at six months will actually help your child not to develop an allergy to nuts. So it was different in my day when we were told not to give our babies peanut butter. Now it's absolutely and positively encouraged. Unless your child suffers from severe eczema, because children who have severe eczema tend to also have food allergies, or if there's a history of a nut allergy in the family. So otherwise, it's important to introduce peanut butter and nuts the ground nuts from six months. And one of the ways I do that is in something like this, or energy balls. You'll find those in my book. This is a recipe from Real Food Kids Will Love. There's two interesting recipes in here which contain nuts. One is this one, another is a carrot cake energy ball, which contains pecans, grated carrots, raisins, and some peanut butter. So that's really good for introducing peanut butter. Or just putting a little bit of peanut butter into a, a puree of butternut squash or, or sweet potato. So I'm just going to whiz it a little bit longer. Okay, we're done. Okay. So, so if you can see this, just take out the blade. Okay. The consistency of it. Yeah? And it's it's really a good consistency for rolling. It's a little bit sticky. It's going to get into a bit of a mess. And you just put it into your hands like this and you roll it to make a ball about the size of a walnut. And you roll some of these. And this is a really fun part for kids to take part in. And you can smell, so I've used the orange extract, you can smell that lovely like flavor of orange which comes through. So these taste like chocolate orange, but they're not chocolate, they're healthy. Janice has just asked, where can she find the exact quantities of the ingredients? What are you able to repeat the quantities? Um, what I will do, I think you'll find them on my website. We have them there, or in the book, the Real Free Kids Will Love book. But if you DM me on my Instagram, um, if you have Instagram, I can answer you and let you know. I'm a big Instagrammer, so we have 254,000 Instagram followers, and I'm always posting my new recipes on Instagram. I love it. It's amazing. You get feedback, you get to know what people want. Um, and also I have a website with hundreds of recipes. And there's a lovely section right now which we put up especially because we're all in lockdown, which is simple family recipes. Because I think it's hard sometimes to have inspiration of what to cook for your family. It's something that would appeal to everybody has that sort of magical child appeal ingredient to it. So take a look at that. And they're in the news section of my website. It's really lovely recipes. I'm just welding this up into a bigger balls. So we recently, I'm excited, uh, launched in Spinneys with our baby purees. You see behind me, um, we have a whole range of baby purees, fruit purees, coconut and fruit purees, vegetable purees, and salmon purees. So they're in Abu Dhabi now and Dubai um, in Spinneys. And if you, um, if you have a look at my Instagram, there's actually a competition. 
to win uh, my signed book. Um, so yeah, have a look, take part. Right. Scroll a few more. So I like to find recipes when you're cooking with kids that kind of are quick because they don't have a long attention span. So it's a good idea to have a recipe that from start to finish takes about 15 minutes, which is this one, which is why I like this one for kids. Um, and also like every part of it they can take part in. And it's a really good way to learn maths because they're learning about weighing and measuring and time, um, but in a more practical way. So they kind of, it's like a maths lesson, but it's not really. So I think they can learn through life a lot. And cooking is such an important life skill. And kids who learn to cook end up having a better diet. And also kids who are fussy tend to be less fussy if they make something themselves. So I had three fussy children. I was blessed with very difficult children as far as eating was concerned. Although I have to say I'm grateful to that because had they been good eaters, I wouldn't have my career. But what I did was when my child, Nicholas, didn't like to eat chicken, but liked apple, I made a recipe in my first book, which was chicken and apple balls. It had become a really, really popular recipe. What I did was take chicken thigh, because chicken thigh is actually more nutritious than white breast of chicken because it contains twice as much iron. And I mixed it together with some chopped onion, some herbs like thyme, some grated apple, because he loves apple, some breadcrumbs. Um, and I rolled it into balls and I cooked them in the oven. And it's been a family favorite ever since then. And he loved eating chicken from that moment. So that was my complete baby top and meal plan. Isabel has just asked, so there's no cooking, how long will they last? So they last quite a long time because they're really quite moist. So I would say they'd keep for a week, um, keep for a week in the fridge, put them in the fridge. Okay, it's probably enough rolling at the moment. I'm just gonna wash my hands. If anyone's just joined us, I'm making no sugar chocolate orange energy balls. What we did was we have dates, cashew nuts, raisins, a little bit of orange extract or grated orange, um, a bit of cocoa powder and some boiling water. And I put everything into a food processor. And I've got my little balls here. This way. We're now gonna roll them. So I have three different things I'm gonna roll them in. Okay, so here we have. Desiccated coconut, cocoa powder, and chocolate sprinkles. So what I'm going to do is take a plate, pop it here, and I'm going to go first in the coconut. So it sticks to the coating because it's a little bit sticky. Swirl in here. And then one in cocoa powder. Again, kids will love doing this. And one in chocolate sprinkles. And if you want to be a bit creative, you could do half and half. So you could do, let's say, half of it in there and half of it in cocoa powder. You get a hybrid like that. So what I love about this is so quick and it's so easy and kids, kids really like to eat them as well. But I like to make real food with kids as well. It's not just making, about making cupcakes and things like that. I think they're perfectly able to learn how to make scrambled eggs, omelets. I think it's like a, an experiment for them. There's just so many ways you can cook an egg and I think they really find that interesting. And then stir fries are good to make with kids because they're very quick and you can use it for vegetables. And what I did when my kids were young and they had a birthday party is I had a cooking birthday party. So there'd be no food on the table because they would be making pizzas themselves, which they loved. And they'd make things like cheesy feet where you have like cheesy pastry and you cut it out with a foot-shaped cutter. And the whole birthday party was all about making the food for the birthday party and got the best pictures. And with my own children on a Friday, they would cook supper for the family. They were still very young. They were about three, five, and six, and I would, with them, choose a recipe from one of my books, get the ingredients ready, chop things up if they were young and they couldn't yet use a knife, and they would make the food themselves, 
and then they will serve it up to us and they love being part of the adult world and that's how we learn to cook. So if your child is fussy, and a lot of children are, about 90% of children do go through a fussy phase, I think presentation is really important. So if you're making something like a cottage pie, a fish pie, it's a really good idea to make it in a small ramekin dish so they have an individual dish rather than it's a dollar for something on the plate. That's a good tip. And sometimes to have a reward chart up in the kitchen where if they've eaten like their vegetables and their fruits and they've tried a new food every day, they get five stars for each new food they try and at the end they get something special like going somewhere they want to go to or staying up late to watch your favorite TV program because probably just work quite well with kids. Um, and the other way of course is to get them to cook with you. It's really important. So if anyone's watching this and they have babies, because that's my speciality is feeding babies. Now that we feed babies and it's recommended that we feed them at six months, I think it's really important to realize that fruit and vegetables alone isn't enough for babies six months and that they need Iron, because the iron they have from the mother starts to run out, so they need foods like red meat or a plant-based sort of food like spinach, which contains iron. But a good tip, and it's important to know this, is that iron from a plant-based food is very difficult to absorb unless you have vitamin C at the same meal. So let's say you have an iron-rich breakfast you like porridge. Serve it with something like blueberries, which are rich in vitamin C, and then they can absorb the iron. And the other thing that's very important, there's two crystal nutrients that babies from six months need. One of them is iron. The best source is red meat. But if you have a plant-based source, combine it with vitamin C. And the other is salmon, which is why when I made my baby puree range, we sell salmon puree. Because there are very few salmon purees available in supermarkets. And babies need salmon from six months. Omega-3s are a very large part of the formation of your baby's brain. So... They should be having salmon twice a week. And so you can make it yourself, like some of my salmon purees, or you can use my pouches. But it's really important to include essential fatty acids like salmon or any other oily fish twice a week. And there really are not very many other sources of essential fatty acids, even though you can get it in seeds, but your baby would have to eat so much of it. That'd be quite difficult. And the other thing about babies, like if you're going to bring your baby up as a vegetarian, the thing to realize is that actually babies need less fiber or more fat in their diet than adults. So an adult vegetarian diet, which is high in fiber and probably low in fat, isn't right for babies. Because what they actually will need is cheese and eggs in their diet and less of the whole grain cereals, a mixture of whole grain and, and normal cereals that are not like kind of more refined. I know it sounds, I know it sounds strange for us, you should give a mix of white bread and brown bread and eat some whole grain cereals and cereals that are not too high in fiber. Because the problem with fiber for little ones is their tummies are very small and it can deplete their body of the important minerals that they need, particularly iron. So it's something to bear in mind. Also, when you're choosing yogurts for little children under the age of two, you should choose whole milk and not low fat yogurts. So these are good things to know if you have a young child, especially a fussy child, which I had, three of them. So a couple of my books I wanted to show you. A new book came out. I bought a new book out this year, at the beginning of the year, which I'm very excited about. Let's just find it, I can see it. Okay. It's this book, Weaning Made Simple. So it's all about weaning your baby from six months. Everything your baby needs to eat and all the advice your baby needs. And what's interesting about this book is there are two ways of weaning babies. One is the traditional way, where you spoon feed your baby. And the other is you go totally baby-led weaning, which is your baby only eats what they put there themselves, so they feed themselves. Now, this doesn't work for all babies because they have to have sufficiently good hand-to-eye coordination to be able to get the nutrients they need, particularly what I talked about, critical nutrients like iron and essential fatty acids. So a lot of health professionals, and me included, I like to do a combination of both like the spoon feeding and the finger foods. When it comes to finger foods, there's a lot of anxiety about like, what can I give? Because I'm anxious about my child choking, which is completely natural, of course we would be. But the good thing to know is that all babies need to learn to chew food and swallow it, and it takes time. And whilst they're learning, it is very likely and almost impossible that they don't gag 
they will gag at some point. But gagging isn't choking. It is their way of learning how to deal with lumps that they don't want to swallow. A lot of people feel that when their baby gags, they must stop giving the finger food. But that's not right. You should persevere. You should always stay in the room. But just make sure that your baby has soft finger foods. Things like banana, avocado, steamed carrot sticks, until they're really, really soft. And the interesting thing is that when you're giving your baby finger foods, you need to cut them fairly large. And that's because babies hold food in their fist like this. So if it's not large enough, it will disappear inside their fist, and you need it to stick out. So I cut my pieces of food, that's my babies when they're very young, quite long, but not too wide so that they can fold them in their fist. And the texture is really important. As your baby starts to have teeth or even strong gums, they can start chewing things, and you can start maybe giving foods like apple and things that like need a bit of chewing. But it's important to begin with to give very soft foods. And one thing that's really good for kids who are teething is to give something really cold. So I make my homemade ice lollies. You can actually take a baby puree like this one. So this is strawberry, banana, and coconut milk. And you can pour it into a very small ice lolly mold. You can get them on Amazon or online. They're really small and they're specially designed for babies to hold in their fingers so they can hold them. And they, they then have the frozen puree, which is really soothing to a baby who has sore gums. It's the same as when you want to give them finger food, you can put your banana in the freezer for a little while because anything really cold will help your child teething. And when they're teething, they tend to be off their food. So it's a good tip to give them something like that. Matilda has just asked, do you do any recipes for blended diets for children who can't feed and have tube feeds? So that's an interesting one, and it's true. Um, sometimes, for example, a premature baby who's been fed in a tube cannot have food themselves and has to go down the tube. So I haven't actually ever done that, but I don't see why you couldn't use my purees to do that, provided the right texture and they can go down the tube. Usually, if your child's premature, they do grow out of that, and it's just a temporary stage. Something I did want to talk about that I think has uh, a lot of interest with mums, especially new mums, is allergies. And the commonest allergy in the UK is actually an allergy to eggs. But what's interesting is a lot of babies who are allergic to eggs, like an omelette or scrambled egg, sometimes can have eggs and say in a meatball or as a coating to a chicken goujon or in a biscuit. And now the research has shown that if your baby can tolerate a small amount of egg in something like a biscuit or a meatball, and you give it to them, you don't give them the scrambled eggs and the omelette they're allergic to, it will help them to grow out of that allergy. So previously we said that if a child had an allergy to eggs, you would withdraw all egg from their diet. But now that's not the same. You look for how much your child can tolerate. It's the same with dairy. There's something called the milk ladder, where you can give a little bit of biscuit which contains milk, and you can gradually increase the amount of milk until you can find your child's tolerance. So it's interesting that nowadays, the whole advice on allergies has changed to give potentially allergenic foods like eggs, dairy, peanut butter, from six months will help your child to be able to, to not develop an allergy. It's different how it used to be. And then to find out if your child does have an allergy, what they can tolerate to that food. So it's important to know that and not to take that food out of your child's diet altogether. And the thing is that if a child does have a dairy allergy, there are non-dairy formula milks you can use. And of course, ice milk would be the best. But if you're going for a non-dairy formula milk, they don't taste very nice. So I wouldn't want to inflict that on a child without having the child properly tested to make sure that they do have an allergy, because sometimes it's a temporary intolerance due to gastroenteritis. And also sometimes if a child has eczema and they eat strawberries or something that's very acidic, it can cause a lot of redness around the mouth. And again, parents can see that as a potential allergy, but it's not, it's just a bit of broken skin that's being aggravated. So for that, I would say to put Vaseline around your child's mouth to protect it from the barrier up. So I've been spending most of my life cooking up recipes in this particular kitchen. I'm always writing a book and we have a lot of interesting channels that I'm gonna tell you about. So I have a Facebook forum, which is sort of a live place where people can chat about the recipes they're making or some of the problems they're experiencing with their child or if they just want help from other mums and to share something. And I answer questions on that. It's Anwar Kandas Facebook forum. It's a really interesting Facebook forum, check it out. We have our Instagram site, which is Annabelle Carmel, where I post my new recipes. We have a Facebook site, where I post new recipes as well. 
And we have Pinterest, where you get loads of different recipes. We have huge following on Pinterest. So there are lots of ways to get our recipes and my books. And we just recently launched an online digital weaning course, which is everything you need to know about weaning your baby, but in depth with a lot of experts, apart from myself on allergies. So check that out. You can see information about that on my website. Andrea has just asked, do you have any advice for children who are extremely picky? My five-year-old has never eaten a veg vegetable and I have taken him to choose at the shop and made all the fun plates. It's difficult. I had difficult children and I learned the hard way. So it's interesting because my children would never eat cauliflower and then I made a recipe for roasted cauliflower. And just by roasting it in the oven, it gets the sweetness of the cauliflower is exaggerated and they suddenly love to eat cauliflower. So there are different ways of preparing vegetables. So for example, I found that the spiralizer, which is quite a cheap piece of equipment if you haven't ever tried one. If you put a courgette or zucchini, same thing, or something like um, a carrot through it, it comes out looking like spaghetti. And then you can put it together with um, a little bit of tomato sauce or just a bit of butter and cheese, and it makes the most fantastic meal. And kids don't really realize that they're eating vegetables. I do veggie burgers where you're hiding the veggies because they're blended. I do like a hidden vegetable tomato sauce with pasta where you can put vegetables like courgette, mushrooms, aubergine, and then you blend them in the tomato sauce and they just love tomato sauce and pasta so they don't realize what they're eating. And sometimes they like raw vegetables rather than cooked, or sometimes just by roasting them in the oven, like roasted sweet potato instead of potato, they're getting much more vitamins because potato isn't actually one of your five a day, but sweet potato is so there's a few ways other things are like stir fries or like chinese fried rice with diced vegetables in it so when it comes to weaning um in the uk now the recommendation is to wait until six months and to exclusively breastfeed for the whole of the first six months and then introduce your baby to finger foods and purees or just finger foods for doing baby led weaning I spent most of my life like developing recipes for babies, toddlers, and children. But I don't just make recipes for little children. I do a lot of proper food for adults. That's amazing. Um, so the recipe that I made today, if you just joined us, was this one, which is no sugar, chocolate, orange, energy balls. So they've got no sugar in them, but they taste like chocolate. And I have another recipe in this book, which is similar to this, also delicious. If I'm going to show you, it's a real favorite of mine. And another one you can make without cooking. Aziz has just asked, where can she find your books? So online, you can find them online. Um, and Kino Kunia, uh, which is a bookshop, always stocks loads and loads and loads of my books. This is a good one. This is a dairy-free fruit treat and chocolate cake. So if your child has a dairy allergy, you can make this as a birthday cake. I'm going to show you a picture of it. Because sometimes if you have a couple of children, Coming to a birthday party, can you see that? And you're making a cake and they can't eat it, it's a real shame. So I'd rather make a dairy free cake like this, which tastes delicious. And the good thing about it is the beetroot in it makes it really, really moist. So that's a lovely recipe in this book. We made this the other day, because now we're in lockdown, we're doing a huge amount of cooking. This is a crumble. I love crumbles, they're so easy to make. This is a blueberry and plum crumble. You can kind of use any fruit. It has the best crumble topping. And all you have to do for this is plain flour. Muscovado sugar, ground almonds, unsalted butter, a pinch of salt, and demerara sugar, and rub it together with your hands. So this book has been a godsend to all of us. Um, this is a vegetable trend, you can see it, but it's making a fun way of presenting vegetables to children. So talking about vegetables again and to eat them, sometimes I thread them onto a straw, things like cucumber and red pepper, and anything that's reasonably soft, put the straw through it and give it to your child in a skewer. So I think we'll come to the end of our demo. Thank you everybody who will be watching or has been watching. Um, do send me your pics on Instagram if you make any of my recipes. I love to share what other people have made. Do follow me on Instagram, Facebook, forum and Facebook and I'll be at the next Abu Dhabi Book Fair where hopefully we'll all be safe and sound. And do take care everybody. It's a dangerous time out there and listen to the advice. It's not worth taking a risk and it's been some of the pleasures of lockdown are you can spend a lot of time with your family and not rushing around. I have to say that kind of getting used to being at home and cooking for the family and having my kids around and so there's some good things that have come out of it. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye bye.